for training, repetitive, to help new students at orientation. So the information that you're learning is going to allow you to help them. So it is important to understand from a new student's perspective of what they're thinking. So what are the academic issues and questions students have at orientation? So there's gonna be academic issues and there's gonna be non-academic issues. So think about these different issues and what you might have been experience, experiencing during new student orientation. And remember that there's a difference between what a freshman is thinking and what they're concerned about and what a transfer is thinking and what they're concerned about. So an example of an academic issue could be something tied to classes and registration, not knowing what classes to take, trying to schedule classes around work, unsure of major. A non-academic issue could be something tied to being in a new city, maybe it's first time away from home. Uh, financial issues, being scared, making new friends, how to get involved on campus, things like that. So we want to spend about a minute to reflect, jot down some notes, and I'll be asking for volunteers to share some academic issues that you think you might see at orientation and non-academic issues. issues and questions. Does anyone have some ideas? Yes. Um, how do I declare or change my major? That's mm -hmm. I, I came in as an undeclared student and I was so confused about that whole process. Yeah, that's a great example. Yep. Well, for transfer students, like, will, will they be able to get the classes? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a concern, especially for transfers. Absolutely. Yes. I'm just I'm not like a person being undeclared, like I was as well, and it was like, what? <laughs> that they're trying to get 
how am I going to work this around my family, around my work schedule, things like that. Yeah, that's great. Any other non-academic issues? Yes. I have been involved on campus. Yeah, that's a great one. Yes. Some on-campus private opportunities. Uh-huh. Yep. Any other items from the very back? No other non-academic issues? Yes. Um, maybe such as like class sizes, like is it is it going to be difficult to be in a class with 400 different people? Yeah, yeah, and that's that can be both an academic issue and a non-academic issue, right? Yeah, that's a great example. Anything else? Okay. No. Yeah. I really wanted to know if I could have a coffee maker in my. Um, <laughs> that was yeah. Like a really big concern of mine. Yeah. And so, you know, we can kind of uh, chuckle about it now, because now we're like, oh, okay, I know how to find those answers. But that will be the other thing, that the role that you're gonna play is so important, because the, the students are going to relate to you faster than they're gonna be able to relate to an academic advisor. There'll be academic advisors in every lab, um, and we'll be with you for those questions that are, you know, a little more difficult, a little more on the top of the pyramid kind of thing. But the students are gonna to come to you first. They're gonna be with you all day. They're gonna have built that rapport with you and your students. So they're gonna find it easier to connect with you and they're gonna feel better saying, what the heck is a red ID to one of you? What about a meal plan? Can I have a coffee maker in my dorm room? Uh, they're gonna to come to you first probably to ask those questions. So we want so we want you to get in that mindset of uh, a new student among new surroundings. Uh, okay, so we talked about that. Um, so I talked about interacting with the students. And because you all play such an important role, I need to make sure that you're able to apply all the information you're gonna learn as we go through and understand how it's relevant and how it pertains to students at orientation. So again, if you have any questions or you need clarification, definitely ask. You can ask during training or you can contact me later. And again, I apologize, this is kind of repetitive. But we wanna make sure that you have a strong understanding of the graduation requirements so that you can fully assist these students, not just with the questions about meal plans and things like that and how do I select my classes, but also with the degree requirements, with the, um, the tools that they have available to, to them and so on. And that's the main point of the quizzes throughout the next several weeks of the training and the final exam. So you could be helping a freshman student look up prerequisites uh, for a course. You could be explaining the American institutions requirement to a transfer student. So we want you to be a successful leader at orientation. And for us, we want to load you with all this information so that you can be that successful leader. Every week, I'm gonna be needing volunteers to read from the catalog to share your answers. So please be ready and follow along and please volunteer. Uh, when we do activities and I ask you to find a partner or get into small groups, please be as fast as you can. And again, if you have questions about your personal record, please wait and then contact me directly. Okay, so we're gonna start with the catalog. So this catalog is your guide. We want you to bring it every week to training. It's also online, just so you know. So inside the catalog is a wealth of information. We want you to get familiar with how the catalog is organized and the types of information it contains. So you're gonna get the 2017-18 catalog before orientation because they're not yet published. And you will be able to transfer all the notes and information that you've jotted down in this catalog and you'll have that with you at orientation. So it would be really helpful if everyone was able to memorize all this information, but it's likely not going to happen because it's a lot of information. So I at least want you to know where to find the information. That's gonna be key. So when you're asked a question at orientation or even during this training, I don't want you to guess. So I want you to look, know where to look to uh, find that correct answer if you're unsure. So let's begin by exploring the catalog. We're going to turn to page three. So what we're looking at here 
is the academic calendar. So this includes deadlines, holidays, final exam dates, schedule adjustment deadlines, all sorts of information about the entire academic year. We turn to page 10. This is where we can take a look at academic advising at SDSU. So SDSU employs a dual model of advising. So what that means is that there are multiple types of advisors here to help students. Uh, for information about general education and graduation requirements, the students will need to see an advisor in the office I work for, advising evaluations. For information about the major, the student will go to that major department and they'll need to see a major advisor. So our website, sdsu.edu forward slash advising, has a lot of helpful information for students. It includes a list of major advisors so they know uh, where to go and who to ask for. Uh, it includes a GPA calculator. It has in information about repeating courses and course forgiveness. Uh, it has information about test requirements. And it has our contact information, so hours at the advising center and our phone advising hours. We have specialized advising offices on campus, such as the EOP, which is Educational Opportunity Program. We have pre-professional advisors for those that plan to attend professional schools. So for instance, dental school, medical school, or law school. And pages 10 through 13 of the catalog include the contact information for the offices that the students would need to go to for their different various advising. So now we want you to turn to page 86. So pages 86 through 98 contain the nine graduation requirements. So there are nine graduation requirements all together, and those are spread throughout these pages. <coughs> You'll notice that these pages are all a different color than the rest of the pages in the catalog. <coughs> and again, they detail the nine graduation requirements that all students must complete in order to graduate from SDSU. We're going to be spending most of our time in training going over the information that is contained in these next pages. But for now, let's go to another section of the catalog. So pages, starting on page 101, going all the way through 464, is information about the undergraduate academic programs offered at SDSU. So this is referring to majors and minors and all the requirements necessary for them. Under each academic department, there is a listing of courses offered by that department along with the course descriptions. Page 102 starts a list of the majors that we offer and the type of degree you would earn. Page 105 has a list of the minors we offer. Page 115, if you flip to page 115, you'll see the information about the accountancy program. So it begins by discussing the background of the program, its focus, and what careers, field, fields, or industries that it will prepare students for. So all majors have pages like this. On page 116, all the course requirements for the accounting major are listed. And on page 117, all the requirements for the accounting minor are listed. On the same page starts the course descriptions for the accounting courses. So why are course descriptions important? Well, they include information about prerequisite. They have the description of the course. If there's any restrictions, those will be listed. And prerequisites and restrictions are different. So since it's your job to know how they're different, how to find them, and how to stress to those new students why they're important, we're going to be going through those. So a course description. So if you flip to page 117, we'll look at accounting 202. So you can see that it has the course number, the title of the course, how many units it's worth, 